Hey everybody, it's uh, Randy Ray and this is The Literate Texan. I have a quick little announcement video for a quick little project that I'm doing, a reading project that I'm doing with, with Brandy at the Book Eclectic. I've always wanted to read a trilogy of science fiction novels called The Mars Trilogy by Kim Stanley Robinson. And uh, it, being a trilogy, obviously, it, it consists of three books. Each of them are a little over 500 pages, but a little under 600 pages. And uh, takes place over the course of about 250 years in the near future, where they are terraforming Mars to, to, to create some extra living space here in uh, the solar system for, for humanity. And, uh, you know, I'm real interested in it. These came out, I, I think the first one came out, well, I've, you know what? I've got the Wikipedia page up here, so I'll tell you about it. Uh, first of all, Kim Stanley Robinson is uh, probably in his 70s now, but he's a science fiction writer. Most of your hardcore science fiction writers that, that, that write stuff like this tend to lean politically toward being libertarian. You know, I'm thinking of like Robert Heinlein and, and Jerry Pornell and stuff like that, politically conservative. Kim Stanley Robinson, on the other hand, is a, is a legit... Uh, not libertarian, but, but, but liberal thinker. So, uh, so there's different, definitely a different kind of political slant coming from, from these particular books. I've read part of the first book once and it's been several years ago. So, you know, I don't know all about this, uh, and I don't know enough to, to, to really spoil it or anything like that. But I, I do like the idea that I'm going to be reading a well, and, and here's the upshot. The most important thing is that I'm not reading it by myself. I'm doing this as a buddy read with my friend Brandy from the Book Eclectic, who's brilliant and funny and, and pretty and wonderful to watch on screen. Everything that I'm not, okay? So, so we're reading this together as a buddy read. We've been talking about it for months, in fact. Uh, we were talking about doing this as a, as a little project, just the two of us, before uh, the summer of Book Trek, even. So we've been talking about this for three or four months, so we're both really excited about it. So, so we're planning to make several videos as the month goes on in September. Yeah, it's the end of August now, so I don't remember dates very well right now, still, because there's a little bit of leftover chemo brain, even though I am in remission. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's more of a utopian type tale than a dystopian type tale, which is also unusual in science fiction these days. Normally, um, <clears throat> everybody likes to read about the end of the world and, and how everything's going to go to hell. And, and I guess they just assume that in the new world order, they're going to, they're going to do really well, um, uh, and be some kind of warlord or something like that. I'm under no such illusions. You know, if the world falls apart and goes to hell, um, you know, they're not going to come to Randy Ray to figure out how to run society. You know, Randy Ray, I'm going to be one of the victims, man. So anyway, yeah, the, the trilogy consists of three novels. There's Red Mars, Green Mars, and Blue Mars. And uh, since it's about terraforming, it probably doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to figure out that Red Mars is set really early in, in, in the Mars of, of our time where there's, there's not a lot of water. <clears throat> there's certainly not any photosynthesis going on. Green Mars is probably after the terraforming has begun and, and you've got some viable plant life and stuff like that. And then Blue Mars, you know, I'm assuming that by the time we get to that point in the in this big overarching story that uh, the terraforming has worked and there's actually water on the surface. So uh, one of the things that interests me about this too is these are all award-winning books. Red Mars won the Nebula Award in 1993 and the British Science Fiction Association Award in 1993. And um, it was published in 92, which was a good 30 years ago now. Um, 519 pages in hardcover, according to this Wikipedia article. There's a huge rundown of the plot, which I'm not going to read because I don't want to spoil the book for myself. But then I'm going to move on to Green Mars, which I know takes place about 50 years after Red Mars. Um, it was published in 1993. It was published the next year, and it won the Hugo Award and the Locus Award. And uh, the Hugo Award's one of the big ones. I've read a lot of Hugo Award winning novels just because I'm interested in science fiction. And, and uh, you know, I, I want to read some award winning science fiction while I'm at it. And then Blue Mars, of course, is the last one. And Blue Mars, I think, takes place a little bit after uh, Green Mars, but not, you know, 200 years later or anything like that. That one was first published in 1996, so it did come out a little bit later, but it won the Hugo Award and the Locus Award. So, you know, these are some pretty big, consistent awards that these books have gotten. And then uh, there's also 
<clears throat> Excuse me. In addition to the trilogy of novels, there's also a collection of short stories called The Martians, which we may or may not read. Um, you know, it depends on how far along we get with the Martian trilogy and also how much we like it. Um, <clears throat> my guess is that I'm really going to enjoy the, the, the Mars trilogy because when I read half of the first one a few years ago, I really liked it. And my guess is that I'll probably want to read the short story collection too. I haven't talked with Brandy about that yet, and the story's still up in the air. But, uh, and then according to the Wikipedia article, the, some of the story elements that are present, transnational corporations are, are part of what's going on in the stories and genetic engineering. Obviously, there's terraforming and stuff going on on, uh, on Mars too. So, so it looks like it's going to be a rip-roaring time. This is an invitation to join in and read along with us if you want to, or you can just watch the videos where we talk about our experience reading the, uh, the Mars Trilogy. But anyway, um, I'm really excited about it. Brandy at the Book Eclectic is really excited about it. I've linked to her down below so you can find out more from her, what, what, what she's doing in terms of it. And you can expect to see some, some videos done by the two of us and some videos done individually uh, by each of us where we talk about the Mars Trilogy. And uh, I've got more videos coming soon, so stay tuned, stay hydrated till then, and, and stay sexy, folks.